Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to this week's Sherpa free lesson. Uh, this is lesson number four. So we're on week number four. We're going to keep it going as long as we can. Um, today's lesson is going to be on maths and trig identities. Uh, trigonometry basically. Uh, Mohammed here is going to be talking you through, um, you know, trick identities, maybe some part, you know, past paper questions. I'm not entirely sure what he's got in store, but I'm sure it's going to be super exciting. Um, again, this is brought to you by Sherpa Online. So Sherpa is an online tuition platform specializing in, you know, one-to-one -one tuition with qualified UK teachers like Mohammed here. So if you do want a session with Mohammed, make sure to go and check his profile out. It should be in the comments below and in the description of the YouTube video later on. Um, but if you're looking for a tutor in another subject, um, make sure to go ahead and check out Sherpa Online. Um, you can speak to one of our tutor experts on 01628 um, that's pretty much it from me. Um, I'll hand over to Mohammed, and I'm sure you're gonna have a great lesson. Thank you, James. Thank you for that introduction. I'll just share my screen and give you guys a little starter activity just to warm your brains up a little bit. So just take a look at that picture and see how many triangles you can count. I'm gonna do the same thing. It'll probably take me a couple of uh, seconds to get my brain into gear. So just relax, sit back and count triangles. I'll give you guys just a few more seconds to see if you can spot, try to look outside of what you can normally see at first glance. Try to look along the lines a little bit. Okay, let's see how we did. James, do you, do, do you, did you manage to catch a few triangles or would you like a few more seconds? Do you think people need a bit more time? I mean, let me see if I can get myself back here. Um, <laughs> I can only see three. It's been a long time since I did uh, trigonometry, so I can only see three at the top. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. We'll um, see if we can show a couple more. Let's have a look. So James is absolutely spot on. We have three at the top. We've got this one, and then the one next to that, and then the one next to that. Um, any more in... And go ahead, James. I think you said yeah, uh, right? yeah, I've spotted my massive mistake at the fact that there is one massive triangle as well. Fantastic. So there's definitely yeah. four. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. a rookie error from me. <laughs> rookie that's, error. That's good. That's why the wall ups here. So don't worry. It's <laughs> not good. So that's your fourth triangle. And then just to use the lines that you might have ignored initially, thinking that they were just there to distract you, but they actually form a triangle. So if we go down the outside and then on the bottom, but then cut in, then that follows up and makes another triangle. So let me give you a few seconds if you can help use that to help you. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I can I can see <laughs> I can see a couple more now. You're you're pointing them out. Uh, I should have looked a little bit harder. No worries. Um, can you do one more on that? Can you can you spot one more around here? I can, yeah. There's the one in the middle, um, obviously the big one, and then the one on the right-hand side. Um, but then you can break it down even more, and you've obviously got the extra layers. So, so you've got the, the medium one on the left-hand side, the medium one in the middle, medium one on the right-hand side. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Fantastic. You're really, really rolling now. Brilliant. Excellent. And the, the clue today is this lesson, which is on trig identities, as James kindly introduced earlier on has a lot to do with just a very simple triangle. So we're gonna be using the right angled triangle in a minute, but let's just try to see what we're trying, what I, what I wanna, want, what I want you to learn and, and we'll be teaching you. So there's a very famous identity that appears in year one A-level, but then gets used a lot in year two, especially if you're looking for the big mark questions in other topics, if you can pull this one out of the bag, then this will really give you access to those top mark questions. And it starts off quite simple. It's sine squared theta plus cos squared theta 
is identical to that extra line at the bottom just means it's not quite your two plus two equals four, but it's the, the, the two sides are the same thing or they'll give you the same answer each time. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to one. What that means is you can put any angle into the theta space. Theta is just a Greek letter to give you the, um, a missing angle, to stand for the missing angle. So we can put any number in there, such as 25 or 35 or whatever number you like. And if you type that into a calculator, that will always give you one, obviously putting in the same number into, into both parts. But today I want you to just take a look at how do we prove that? How do we really um, get to the right-hand side? How do we get from sine squared theta plus cos squared theta and end up with just one? So let's start with a right-angle triangle. And I want to make it so basic for you that it's just going to be GCSE math. So don't worry if there's parts of year one math, A-level math, that you haven't quite grasped but we're just going to break it down into GCSE maths. So we've got a right angle triangle, and I'm going to mark a theta, a missing angle here. There's the right angle. And just give you a few moments just to think, what are the labels, what are the names that we give to each of those three sides? I'll give you a clue. One of them is called the hypotenuse. But just take a second to think, what are the other two called? Okay, hopefully you've got that, that the hypotenuse is this long one here. And then opposite the theta, opposite the angle is your opposite at the side. So this side here is called the opposite. And this side here is called adjacent. Really basic GCSE maths. Hopefully nothing troubling you there. And then before we go too much into the trigonometry, just think about what the basic formulas are. So we've got sine and cos squared, but if you just go back to basics and just think, okay, what's, what's the basic formula for sine theta and cos theta? Hopefully you remember something called Sokotoa, which is just a quick way of remembering which way around the formulas go. So sine starts it off and it's the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we can write sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. We don't really need to know about tan, so I'm just going to leave tan alone and just keep those two there for a bit later. Okay, but still sticking with GCSE maths, when you see a right angle triangle and you see three sides, then something beginning with P, a very, very special theorem, should be coming to mind. Hopefully you've got it. It's Pythagoras' theorem, which says that A squared plus B squared, very famous formula, is equal to C squared. A and B are the two shorter sides, and C is the longest side, the hypotenuse. So there's nothing stopping us from applying Pythagoras, A squared plus B squared, equals c squared on this triangle here. So let's do that. We can call this side a, as it's got a big a here. So we can say a squared plus, and then the other shorter side here is called opposite. So we're gonna just stick with the opposite, the o. a squared plus o squared, and c is the hypotenuse, is equal to h squared. Okay, fantastic. So none of that should hopefully be too much. That's all GCSE stuff. We're just using the formulas from sine, cos, and tan, uh, and using Pythagoras as well. So now let's really get into sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to one. How do we get that from this? So we can put this away, and we can say that sine theta And let me make some room. Fantastic. So the first thing is sine squared theta. Well, I don't have sine squared theta. I just have sine theta. So let's try and get sine squared theta. All I need to do is square both sides. 
And now, sine theta squared is just written as sine squared theta. It's just the same thing, but written in a neater way, so you don't have to look at the brackets. Is equal to, well, since I squared the left-hand side, I've got to square the right-hand side. So applying the square to the top and the bottom, I've got opposite squared divided by hypotenuse squared. And now I've got a match. This is sine squared theta, and I've got sine squared theta here. So I can do a perfect substitution. I can take away my sine squared theta, and I can replace it with O squared, opposite squared, divided by hypotenuse squared. And if you thought that was not too hard, well, we can do the same thing with the cos. So I need to get cos squared, and I've got a formula for cos here. So how about I square both sides? And what does that give me? Well, on the left-hand side, cos theta squared just becomes cos squared theta. It's the same thing, but it's just a neater way of writing it. On the right-hand side, I've got adjacent being squared on the top, and then on the bottom, the hypotenuse also gets squared. So now, taking a look back at what we had here, we've got cos squared theta and cos squared theta. Again, that's a perfect match, so let's bring those in. Cos squared theta can go down here, and a squared plus uh, over h squared can join the plus here. Well, that's looking brilliant because now I've got two fractions, um, but I need to show that it's e still ident I need to show that it ends up as one. So how am I going to do that? So let's just bring the, the one back here. We need a bit of space here to work with the fractions. So when you're adding fractions, remember that the denominator, as long as it's the same on both fractions, then you just simply add the top. So here that's true, h squared, is the denominator on both. So this addition will just turn into h squared at the bottom. And on the top, I'll have o squared, opposite squared, plus adjacent squared. Now, can you guess what I'm going to do from here? Because I'm getting closer and closer, but it still doesn't look anything like one. I'm just in need of one vital step to make this turn into one. And it's something we did right at the beginning with that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Give you a few seconds to try and guess. Just to make it a little bit easier for you, I'm going to change the order here. So a squared so O squared plus A squared, let me just change the order so that I've got the A squared first. Give you a moment to think what might come next. This plus doesn't want to move. Look somewhere on the screen, we wrote something very similar. And if you look back right at the top, we applied Pythagoras to that right angle triangle. We had the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. And applying Pythagoras, we had the a squared plus o squared is equal to h squared, the hypotenuse squared. So that's exactly what we've got at the top here. So I can do a substitution. I can send that over here and bring in the equivalent, which is h squared. And now, and now if you look at that, the top and the bottom of that fraction are both h squared. They're both the same number. And any number divided by itself is always going to be equal to 1. So that's how you can show that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta does work out to be equal to one.
Just going to pause for a moment and ask any of you if there's anything there you want to ask a question about. And, and James, if it's okay with you, please read out any questions they might have. James, is there anything that's off the top of your head? Let me just unmute myself and share myself again. Um... No questions at the moment from uh, anyone on that. There is one about parallelograms, but I think we'll ask answer, ask that um, at the end, um, just not to interrupt the flow. Um, uh, unfortunately, maths is, was never my strong strong point at school, so and it's been a long time since I was doing that. So I've got no questions. It all kind of went straight over my head. Um, no I can worries. see the basic principle though, um, but I don't think I've got any questions no. Fantastic. So I've got two questions for the um, for those watching. So if they don't have any questions for me just yet, let me see if they can apply what we've learned. So we've learned that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical identical to one. Can I ask the question number one, which is the easier question? You can either go for the easier or the harder. But if you want to just warm up a little bit and go into it easy, can you rearrange? for cos theta. See if you can rearrange this for cos theta. If that's too easy for you, uh, go for the harder one because this is something that comes up in a chapter called parametric equations. And this will take the form of giving you two equations, one for x, which might look like something like x is equal to the cosine of t plus one. And the second equation might look like y equals two times sine t. And the question will be, can you form an equation with just x and y and not t? With just x and y and not t. And really, the key to being able to do that is the identity sine squared plus cos squared theta is identical to one. So take your pick and in about two minutes, I'll see how you're doing on that. This is a really, really interesting identity here. That um, The amount of times I've used this to solve really tough questions, it's really hard to, hard to put a number on. But once you've got it in your head, it's, the key is really just to think of it whenever you've got an, a question where sine and cos are featuring in, a bit like the Pythagoras questions. When, when you've got a hard question on triangles, it's normally Pythagoras that helps you out right at the end when you don't have any other idea what to do. So this is something really, really good just to get some practice and, and use when it's not obvious from the question. Notice that none of these, uh, especially the one on the right, didn't specifically say use the identity. Just a few more seconds to see how you're doing on either one. Okay, do not worry that I would normally give you much, much more time to try.
try one of these questions, but just because uh, we want to um, give you an introduction only, I'm just going to skip and go straight to that second question and just show you how to start it off, just in case you're wondering that, hold on, both of these equations have got T, and that's really nothing to do with the identity we learn, and I don't know how to rearrange to get T on its own. So let me show you T is just simply the angle. And we can call the angle theta, or we can call it T. It really doesn't matter. So the first thing we can do is we can rewrite sine squared theta with T instead of the theta, and say that sine squared t plus cos squared t is going to be equal to 1. And then the trick is, if you just take one equation at a time and rearrange it for cos or sine, you'll be able to then use that in the identity. So here, we want to just get the cos t on its own. So let's take the plus 1. and move it across, and that will become a minus 1. So now I've rearranged just so that I've got cos t on its own. Don't forget to change that to a minus. Similarly with the second equation, try to rearrange that. So you've got just sine t on its own. Let's bring the 2 across. So that's going to be dividing by 2 on the other side. That's fantastic. I've got cos t. I need cos squared. I've got sine t, but I need sine squared. So let's square both sides of both equations. That's the top one done. And now the bottom one, just squaring both sides. Nothing more complicated than that. Then the cos t squared with the brackets can be just rewritten without the brackets by bringing in the 2 into the inside. It's just a different way, just a neater way of writing the same thing. Same with the sine squared t, just bring that squared sign inside the brackets. Saves lots of brackets in tough questions. a little bit of a haircut so let's just bring that back and now you're ready to do the substitution because if you look closely at this identity you've got an exact match sine squared t that's exactly the same as this so that can go here and the y squared over 2 can come here the y over 2 squared can come here Similarly, I've got an exact match for the cos squared t. That can come over here. And the x minus 1 squared can come over here. Just need to make a bit, of, bit more room. And neaten that up. And then, just to remove the brackets, apply the squared to both bits. So I've got the square being applied to the y. That's y squared. The square being applied to the 2, so that's divided by 4. And then the next bit you can just leave with the brackets, because if you were to expand that out, it would look quite long and messy. So it's nicer just to have it written with the brackets, and then finish it off. And that is your final answer. That's an equation. We formed an equation with just x and y, just x and y, no t in sight. And that is your final answer, and that's a parametric equation. So that's those kind of questions are worth a lot of marks. So well done if you followed that. If you didn't follow that, this session has been recorded, so feel free to just go onto the recording and just watch that back to yourself. Normally the second time is a lot easier. That's the end of today's introductory lesson on the trig identities. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of it, but I think we do have a little bit of time to answer any questions. James, would you like to... Uh, just share any questions yeah of course okay so we've got um one question here um which is can someone they need help um basically calculating the area of a par parallelogram um uh it's got one side that's seven centimeters one side that's 10 centimeters it's got an angle of 50 degrees any any way you could help on that one 
Yeah, of course. Let's let's uh, draw that out, and you can tell me if I'm drawing it roughly right. So just a, a very quick sketch of a parallelogram, and I'm going to have that bottom line dead straight. Yeah, so it says the bottom line is the 10 centimeter one, and the uh, size is the 7 centimeters. Fantastic. So got 10 centimeters on the bottom. Is it this side here, which is seven and the other one is seven as well? Uh, it's just got it on two, one, you know, one on seven, one on 10, apparently. Okay, fantastic, that's fine. Uh, the, that's, it doesn't mean the other side isn't seven, but it's just that this side it's, is gonna help us work out the answer. The other side will probably get in the way. And then the angle in between? Was 50 degrees. 50 degrees, good. So the question with the parallelogram or the area of the parallelogram is, is the formula is base times height. But you have to be very careful with the height. The height is the perpendicular height. So that has to go straight up vertically. So what we now need to do is just take a little snapshot of this corner and say that if we were going straight up vertically, that would be this line here. And that's the, side, that's the line that we want. But in that position, it doesn't really help much. So I'm just going to bring it across to hit this corner here. And now what you've got is a right angle triangle. So you can try to work out the, the height using that. Um, but um, there is another way as well. So probably if, um, because we're running out of time, I'd start off with that and then see if you can get the answer through there. Brilliant, awesome. And then the uh, last question that we have is uh, a very generic one. I think they just want to get to know a bit more about you. Um, and it's what's your favorite topic in maths to teach? Um, there, there's so many favorites. Vectors is good. Uh, quadratic equations is good. Uh, binomial expansion is pretty good. Uh, what have I been teaching recently that's really nice? Um, probably the trig identities is just so good because once once you're, it's like having a jigsaw. So you've got so many pieces when you're putting them together, just rearranging the identity and then just making it fit perfectly to get the new identity. I'd probably go with trig identities. Brilliant. Good thing you've just done a, a, a lesson on it then, isn't it? I think your passion definitely came through, so that, that's excellent. Okay, um, that's uh, that's all for today's lesson, everyone. Um, thanks for getting involved and uh, the two of you that put in questions. Thank you very much for that. Um, let me just quickly change the scene again. There we go. Um, Okay, yeah, so that's gonna be the end for today. Um, as I said at the beginning, if you wanna check out Mohammed's Sherpa profile, it'll be in the links of the, uh, it'll be down in the description with a link um, on the YouTube video, and it'll also be in the comments of this Facebook post. Um, so make sure to go and check him out, have a couple of sessions with him. Uh, I'm sure he'll help boost your grades and confidence. Um, he's certainly, um, reawakened a, a bit of my maths um, all the way back from 2014 um, so that's always good a good sign um, and as I said earlier you know if you want uh, if you're looking for a tutor just get in touch with Sherpa and we'll be more than happy to help you can speak to one of our tutor experts on 01628337590 um, Mohammed, I'll let you have the last word and say goodbye yeah, fantastic. Thanks, James. That was really nice. And I hope you guys learned something about trick identities. See you again soon.